Hey guys, Dr. David Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today's topic will be the use of oral contraceptive pills or birth control pills in the management of acne. Uh, as you know, this has been mainstream treatment by both physicians, endocrinologists, and dermatologists throughout the world. Generally speaking, the pill, because of its anti-hormone effects, can control acne in females. Now, this is, like I said, it's a mainstream treatment and basically second line treatment after the use of creams. The fact remains that acne is very, very common. So it affects 50% of females at some stage of their life. Now, adult acne, uh, as the name suggests, usually occurs in the early to mid 20s. However, there's a subpopulation of women who have acne at a much older age. The reason being is that their hormones, in particular estrogens, decrease over time. And as a result, there's a hormonal imbalance. So it's not uncommon to have adult acne. <clears throat> now, how it's different from teenage acne is that teenage acne most often, as the name suggests, consists of lumps and bumps, blackheads and whiteheads, usually in the teenage years. While adult acne or adult female jawline hormonal acne basically involves, as the name suggests, adults. It's usually deep-seated around the jawline area. It's painful. It's cyclical with the period cycle, and it can be persistent and resistant to treatment. Now, the mainstream treatment of um, this or hormonal acne is anti-hormones. So certain things like the pill and the pill in particular, the ones that contain anti-androgens. So by using a POP, a progesterone only pill, it increases the risk of acne. Similarly with uh, birth control devices such as the Marina and Implanon. So most um, dermatologists prefer the use of anti-hormones. So the first anti-hormone pill is basically uh, one which contains Cypritone acetate, two milligrams. So they come as a trade name for things like Brenda, Juliet, um, and, and Estelle. And then the other one is basically drospirinone, which is basically two milligrams, and that's usually found in things like Yaz or Yasmin. Occasionally, dermatologists will prescribe an, another anti-hormone known as spironolactone, which, which is a potassium-sparing diuretic, um, and in the order of somewhere between 50 all the way up to 200 milligrams per day. So those are the three main anti-hormones which dermatologists use. Herein lies the problem. <laughs> Adult female jawline uh, acne or hormonal acne usually occurs um, just after the teen, somewhere like in the um, early to mid 20s. When, when basically dermatologists put patients on the pill, it does in a lot of circumstances, in, in over 60% of the cases, settle down the acne. So the acne is well controlled. Herein lies the problem. We know that um, being on the pill can control it. We know that, um, especially if you have period changes or, or um, cyclical acne, which erupts around that particular time of the month, um, anti-hormones are often very good choices because they just they suppress acne, but they also suppress uh, things like hirsutism, especially in PCOS. So hirsutism is excess hair, and that can be found in certain disorders of um, uh, uh, endocrinology, such as polycystic ovarian syndrome, as well as elevations of things like testosterone with 17 hydroxy progesterone uh, deficiencies, and also um, increase in testosterone and pro prolactin. So guys, um, herein lies the, the trick, yeah? Here guys, lies the dilemma, and it's, and it's this. When you are well controlled on uh, an oral contraceptive pill, that basically masks uh, your uh, effects, yeah, for a long period of your life. Most often uh, between the ages of, let's say, early 20s or even uh, late teens, all the way to late 20s or early 30s. Herein lies the problem. Um, when women want to um, uh, basically conceive, um, doctors will take them off the pill. And what happens, basically it unmasks the acne. So the acne which you have there for the past uh, decade has been swept under the carpet and um, basically well controlled, right? So it hasn't been cured, this has been well controlled. So the acne hasn't been in remission, but it's been quiet for that whole decade. Once patients go off the oral contraceptive pill, what happens, bang, acne hits. And as a result, the reason why I'm doing this uh, video is that I see uh, two peaks of acne scarring. The first peak is um, in the teens, uh, and the second peak, usually young adults, and usually in the mid to late 20s and early 30s 
when patients come off the pill. Then we actually, the derms, the medical dermatologists are faced with a very difficult situation because we cannot use um, topicals or even uh, oral systemic agents uh, because of conception. So things like even as simple as topical retinoids, so the things like, you know, tretinoin or, or retrieve or even things like uh, adapalene or differin or Zorac, even though, or even retinol for that for that fact, because some dermatologists even uh, will be extra cautious and won't even uh, say, you know, you're right to use retinol. I'm certainly one of those who, who are on the side of caution. So then we're left with a very tricky situation because during this time, uh, hormones are unregulated. And as a result, um, deep-seated cysts can occur, especially around the jawline. Picking can lead to uh, scarring and then scarring has to be fixed at a later stage of life. So I guess this video is, is based upon uh, my experience over the past 20 years as a dermatologist, uh, what I've seen in private practice, what I see a lot. Um, and it's not really mentioned much in the literature. And when you speak to, I guess, your dermatologist or, or your physician, they don't, I wouldn't say they don't, they probably understand this, but they don't usually discuss the long-term implications. At some stage, we need to come off the, um, come off the pill. Now, that's left patients with a very difficult situation because the acne may be in the perception of the physician may be so mild or mild that it should be controlled on second line therapy like the pill um, and the patients are happy because um, it works it's convenient so it's a form of contraception it's convenient relatively safe look at the end of the day uh, your physician would uh, make sure that there are no contraindications to the pills. So for example, a family history of blood clots, migraines, um, certain medications that which, which you may be on. Um, and the risk factor for, I guess, developing something nasty like that um, is, is basically double. So instead of one in 10,000, it increases your risk for, to two in 10,000 uh, in the absence of other contraindications. So certainly, the pill is a sensible choice, but what are we left with at the end of the day? We're left with very little because most of us will not use, um, it's an overkill for um, oral retinoids because oral retinoids as in Accutane, Isotretinoin, Orotane, Roaccutane, all of these have, <laughs> when you look at the side effect ratio, the side effect ratio is uh, obviously much higher than that of the oral contraceptive pill. So it's certainly that is an effective way of treating acne, but it should be re reserved for acne which doesn't respond to conventional treatment or really severe cystic scarring acne. Obviously there are other indi indications, but that's the indication which most dermatologists use before prescription of Accutane. So we've got that, we've got the hormones, and then we've got all the topicals. So things like, for example, the benzyl peroxides, your topical antibiotics, your uh, topical retinoids. So we've mentioned them before, um, the uh, tretinoin, the retrieve, the uh, adapalene, which is different in the US, uh, and also the tazaritin or Zorac. Uh, and then a whole heap of other cosmeceuticals, which I'll go through later. So we're left in a diff difficult situation. I don't think there's an easy solution. Um, Seriously, there isn't an easy solution. Comment down below. Um, seriously, I'd like to know how many uh, women out there who've experienced this particular problem where you've had acne before, it's well controlled on the pill. It comes at a certain time of your life when you come off the pill and as a result, acne worsens. So I really like to know how many patients in real life experience that problem. And you can see how difficult it is to treat. So what can we do? What are sensible options? Um, I think it's hard because you're not going to place someone, like I said, you're not going to place someone prophylactically on, on um, a high dose vitamin A, on something like Accutane, just because you can foresee that in 10 years they're going to have problems. Patients can't accept that. I mean, they, we, we, you know, I understand 10 years down the track, it's very hard for someone, especially in the teens, to understand the implications a decade later. And as I said, dermatologists are probably, the risk benefit ratio probably does not weigh up against the use of isotretinoin early on. So what else can we try? I think it's very difficult, yeah, because once you're off that and when you're going for, uh, when you're trying to conceive, you have a, a very, very narrow therapeutic window of certain things which are acceptable and safe and effective. So you might try, obviously, the diet. Diet may work well. Um, the other thing as well is apart from acne diet, um, so eating healthy, eating less sugar, eating less dairy, eating uh, more unrefined foods, uh, more natural foods, supplementing that with zinc, 
supplementing that with sensible um, vitamin A, so anything less than you know two to three thousand international units. Supplementing that with phytotherapy, so phytotherapy like um, sensible light, even sunlight, sensibly, um, and or medical light, for example, low-level laser emission devices, uh, so the red light, the blue light. Uh, what else can you try? You can try things over the counter, for example, benzyl peroxide (BPO) uh, between two to five percent. Sometimes you can go up to ten percent. You can use that as a wash. You can use salicylic acid in the context of pregnancy. Most dermatologists don't like to do high strength salicylic acid peels, but 2% salicylic acid is fine. Uh, you can supplement that with glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, citric acids, so all the alpha hydroxy acids. Um, retinol, I think it's a contentious issue because um, there's still a warning uh, in, in, in many skincare companies. I can understand that because you do have um, some conversion to retinoic acid, which as you know, is contraindicated in pregnancy. So all the, uh, all the prescription retinoids, they're a no-goer. Um, what else can you try apart from that? Um, you know, it, it's certainly topicals like clindamycin, erythromycin, erythromycin and zinc. Your physician will have their own favorite, um, I guess, formulations uh, for you to use. Really last resort stuff like, you know, 5% uh, sulfur. It's an, it's an oldie but a goodie by, by dermatologists. So these are all solutions which you can you can try. Now now the big thing, and I hear I hear you guys, yeah, because you have you go to a GP, you go to your physician or, or your dermatologist, and they go, this is hormonal. But you go, hang tight, I've just had a hormone test, so that they, they've tested you from everything, from your prolactin to your estrogen to your LH FSH ratios, um, testosterone levels, and hold up. So it's not. Actually, in most situations, I'm not saying all situations, certainly the secondary causes of acne that, that we know of and that's what we test, but in most situations you have normal hormones but you still have hormonal acne. How is that possible? Well, basically it's this. Uh, there are endocrine, uh, which is basically endocrine conditions, right? Um, but there are conditions as well, not within the um, endocrine system, but within the actual sebaceous gland. So you're in target here. So you have normal hormones which bind to your sebaceous glands. They get converted into something called DHT or dihydrotestosterone. Yeah. So that's called intracrine. So it's not endocrine, it's intracrine. So intracrine is basically within the gland itself. So it's a hard concept to understand, but you get a conversion from your normal hormones, right, into the oil gland. The oil gland has a dysfunction in other words, it's within the gland itself, not within the hormones, within the gland itself. That converts all the androgens, well, most of the androgens into DHT. DHT is the one which is more active in regards to producing oil, which is sebum. So basically, the abnormality is in the intracrine level and not in the endocrine level, even though we call it hormonal acne. So that's why it's very, very, very difficult. Why does this occur? No one knows exactly why it occurs um, because it can be genetic um, and this thought of environmental as well. Because when you look, <clears throat> when you look back uh, at, at the cause of acne, the incidence is, uh, is uh, increasing and there are many causes and many other, I guess, factors which come into play. Everything from stress, exogenous um, things like, for example, like uh, makeup um, from foods, from hormones within foods, and then multiple factors. But a lot of these factors, um, you know, except for taking off your makeup and, and letting your skin breathe and normal exfoliation, a lot of these factors within the intracrine level cannot be controlled. So this is why it's very difficult to control hormonal acne, even though the hormones are normal. Guys, I think this is a topic which has not been broached by many people. I don't hear it in, uh, in conferences. Um, I don't read about it much in journals. Um, we know what happens, um, and, but I think the solution is very, very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult for dermatologists, it's very difficult for patients. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's just me voicing uh, what I see on a day-to-day -day basis, um, how I perceive things. Um, please like, comment, share. Uh, I do a lot more of, I guess, explanations. If, if, if you want explanations, in, I guess, in a layman's term, it's uh, Instagram, Dr. Davin Lim. If you want more in-depth explanations for, for patients who are, I guess, scientifically based or want to go into a little bit more, uh, I go into a little bit more detail at uh, 101.skin. 
Um, but guys, if you see me around the lecture circuit uh, in Australia internationally, say hello. Um, glad to, to help. Guys, thanks for that. I'll catch you next week. Bye for now.